Hey guys, it's Steve. I'm going to talk to you today a little bit again about Townstar and Gala Games. So those of you who don't know who Gala Games are, it's the maker of Farmville. Changed it now to a crypto game where Townstar you can play. It's just like um, it's just like Farmville. And I'm going to show you my town. And I'm going to let you know that uh, when you join up with this, if you want to get seriously into it, it is going to take some investment. Not a lot of investment necessarily unless you want to get really, really into it. So they do have a $10 thing. I haven't decided if I wanted to do this yet. This is kind of the first uh, like prove that you're into the game. You have to deposit $10 into the system. You get a couple little perks. And then you get to... Um, if you want to go bigger into the game, they have these robots and what these robots do if you build them, you have to buy these pieces. They're all on sale, 50% off now. So if you're somebody into these type of games, maybe come take a look. Um, things are cheaper than they're going to be. I haven't bought the robot. I don't know if I plan to buy the robot. Um, and will uh, they also have these kind of special little uh, things and items that you can buy for the game. So it's all kind of interesting. I haven't bought anything. You, They do have a referral program. You get friends to sign up. You get 100 gala. That's only worth 10 cents right now. I have one friend who signed up. They do have a nice uh, little wallet here that at least supports Ethereum as this is an ERC-20. So there's that whole gas issue right now. Um, sorry, Ethereum, but that gas issue is not that great. Uh, and Bitcoin automatically, and they do support a few others here. As you can see, kind of the main big name cryptos. We'll get into it. They do have, this is the farm bot. Basically, he lets you do a special kind of farming. And then this crane bot builds things faster in your town. So if you want to play the game really competitively and have things built faster, you would buy the stuff you need to build the crane bot. If you want to farm what are called box tokens in the game, then you would build uh, this bot here. And you basically have to buy all the pieces. You click on more info, it tells you what you need. Once you have them all, you assemble them and then you can use them. They also have nodes that run this game. One of these master nodes currently costs $2,000. It would farm you Gala coins. I'll do a separate video on the nodes if it's requested. Right now, I'm just going to be going over the game because I'm going to do something kind of funny. It's going to kind of be a longer video. So this is just a quick breakdown. If you just wanted to know a little bit about Gala games and the, and the overall uh, town star stuff, then you could end it here. I'll be sad, but maybe you'll subscribe. That would be super cool. I'm looking to get more subscribers. They did make a partnership with another game I play, Splinterlands, so that Gala tokens that you earn in the game can now be used to buy Splinterland NFT cards. I do have other videos on my channel about Splinterlands. I basically cover different crypto projects and crypto games because I'm a gamer and a crypto person. Uh, maybe I'll start to specialize on just one or the other. If I start getting comments on my videos, my crypto project videos do get more views. But there is good ROI in a game like Splinterlands for me, and I'm seeing if there is if it's worth it to get into Townstar. I'm going to go show you my town now, and then I'm going to explain what we're going to do, and then I'm going to pause the video, do some stuff in the game, and then pick it back up from there. So this is my town. We are currently in a session. Each session lasts, I believe, yeah, five days. So there's two days left. Um, I've done pretty well with this town. As you see, I have almost $4 million. I am making money pretty quick, but I'm getting to the point where I have $4 million and I don't know what to buy. There's not stuff in the game for me to buy at this level that is that good. And I went with a town that was going to do bakers. So I'm making cakes in theory. So I have two cakeries. And I have two bakeries and I'm trying to make, they're trying to make butter and then they're, they're just trying to make stuff. But these salt patches are super necessary and I haven't figured out the trick to them. Most of the things in this game have tricks to them and I'm going to go over those in the extended uh, next part of this video. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this entire town and start from scratch. Because I'm going to have, after I delete it all, something like four million dollars. And that's enough to build up a pretty good town. It isn't enough to build up everything here, but I'm going to go with a different idea. I took a look at these um, fabric plants and these can make a uniforms, which would be a third level item similar to a cake. 
but they don't require you to make, get salt or milk, which are a pain in the butt to get. Just a quick little thing. You just need cotton and wool. The sheep getting wool is kind of similar to getting milk, but a little bit easier. I am going to need a lot of them, but it basically limits me right now. I only have to grow cotton, wool, and trees. So these are things that are very, very normal. And that's all you need is, is cotton, wool, trees. Whereas to run my bakery, I need feed to feed the animals. I'll need feed to feed the, the, them too. So I guess I'll need wheat too. So I'll need those, those four items. But I have to have a tree farm, a salt farm, a wheat farm, a sugar farm up here. Then I have to have all these windmills producing lots and lots of the uh the the flour the sugar all the things that you would need for baking right it, it, it's a game like that right it's not super like shoot 'em up fun game but it's it's a it's a it turns it moves you can play it off to the side while you're doing other things check in on your town you don't have to like water your plants it's not that kind of thing it's it basically can you manage a town can you build it to be efficient can you put things in the right places it's some of the stuff i'm just learning about and like I said, I'm going to pause this soon and then I'm going to get to deleting all of this and I'll come back and we'll do a longer video of me rebuilding a new town where I'll show you some of the tricks. But a few quickly, once you set this up and you put a building next to it, it automatically gets one water. Uh, this is the water pump. If you put a building next to your power plants, it automatically gets up to three power if it's directly next to it, one power if it's diagonally across. So this building, when it was making cakes, always had three energy. This one right here that's making me gas that normally needs six energy, he doesn't have to get any energies to get to make the gas. And energy is a very annoying thing early on in this game. So that's something I just realized now is that if you put your buildings that need a lot of energy next to your power plants, or just build extra power plants if you have the money next to your buildings that need power, you can set it up so that you will not need as much power. And that's one of the tricks I've learned to this game in order for your town to be really efficient you need to map it out so your plants grow without needing to be watered so that your buildings can run without needing a lot of extra energy or extra items you want to have them need the bare minimum items that you have to farm out of the ground and have everything else be provided because they're built next to the right things well that's one of the reasons why I selected to put my town right here in the middle right next to a lake I also went with a plane because if you don't go with the plains, you end up, if you go with the forest, you're going to have a ton of tree trunks, a ton of, and, and those, and marshes and all kinds of things. So I really think plains is best for fun. I'm going to try doing a, um, what do you call it? I don't know why that's making a weird sound when I zoom in. So I'm going to back out. I'm going to go ahead and try to make a desert town just to see what the heck that does. I don't think it'll be good because so much of this is farming. I, that's, and I don't really see anybody in, in the de desert areas. These people, I guess, are up here. Is this desert? But see, they didn't build in the desert. They, they built next to it in what's not desert. So uh, if you're mountain mining you could go for mines and stuff like that i do want to show you if you want to mine the box stuff they have these special things box coin mine you need to build next to it so on the first day you got to log in and you got to go now i'm not going to remove my town like when you click on it because that loses me my money i have to go in delete everything so if you want to end it right here at the eight minute mark that's fine you got a quick look at the game there'll be some links in the descriptions for some way to get some free bitcoin another site that you can play games on and earn free cryptocurrency there'll also be a link if you want to get into gala games try it out they will be having more games coming out later on so setting up an account getting that hundred gala for free it might be worth your time if you like to get into these little games, play them, see what else they're going to come out with, see what other kinds of games they might be interconnected to like they did with Splinterlands. Any of that kind of stuff is going to be a lot of fun. But in the meantime, I'm going to get to selling off the last few of my items that I want to sell to get a little bit more money. I'm going to delete this town and then we're going to pick it back up after a quick little break where I will start rebuilding the town. All right, so I'll be right back for those that are going to stick around. All right, guys, I'm back, and as you can see, I've decimated my town. So this is going to take a little while. This is kind of a tutorial for anybody who wants to know kind of how the game works. So I showed you before. I picked 
a spot by the lake and I really do think that spots by the lake I don't know why that sound comes I don't know if you can hear it but I have to be out here are good uh, because you get if you get three waters it can help you out a lot with not needing a lot of water to water your town if you can get at least two waters you can probably make that work and there's some benefits maybe they're not having all water around you but I really think that this is a pretty good spot um, unless you want to go the mountain range now I tried going cakeries before I don't like going cakeries because basically you need salt and salt uh, I don't know if there's a trick to it if I figure it out later or if somebody knows it put it in the comments it takes 10 minutes for a uh, salt to harvest it only takes seconds for these trees it only takes seconds for these look 20 seconds for these it doesn't take very long for cotton so I'm gonna try the fabric route this time so the f uh, I have a few buildings that I left around here mostly just so that I have some wood uh, some energy this will help me build some of the buildings I need to build and I did leave one power plant and one um, what do you call it one uh, one refinery sorry of course I'm getting some brave ads right now so I'm gonna switch this guy over I left a refinery here just to make me some gasoline because I have to make sure I have some gas eventually I'm gonna destroy this one um, I want everything on my coastline to uh, be taking advantage of being next to the water and a fuel pump is just not most of this stuff I'll, des I'll destroy eventually as we get this building going I, it's kinda hard to blow these up they cost a lot <laughs> And um, I just left this here for now because these this is holding wood. These ones are holding wood. This will help me build. But as I build out and everything, uh, some of that will go away. I tried to leave behind two of my farm tractors or three of my farm tractors. They're a little more expensive too. Or maybe there's even a couple more. Oh, yeah, look, one here, one here, one here. I'll see as I build out the city. If they're in the way, I'll get rid of them because I can rebuild them. After the whole total breakdown and sellout, I have almost six million. If you're wondering how I'm doing, I'm ranked 17th. Probably pretty good for a player who hasn't bought anything, is playing for free. But I'm way behind these top people. They're in the millions. With two days left at the current pace I was growing, I might have made it to a million, but these guys would have been way higher than that. I'd show you their cities, but at this point, I don't know how to do that. I've clicked on them. It doesn't take you to them. I've clicked on other cities on the map. I don't see a way to inspect them. So that is maybe one advantage either I don't know how or they don't let you see it. Now one thing to know with your plants. So when you have a water source like the like these big lakes in the corners they will build trees and trees need seven waters. Um, sugar canes need eight waters and they will build sugar canes too. So it's good to know that if you were going to try to go cakery or um, uh, what I'm doing here you want to put your trees in these corners so I've dedicated the trees in the corners I put this one here to kind of show you the breakdown of how it goes so this one's getting seven these ones over in the corner get a whole lot and then this one gets six and as you get into the middle here this one only gets five I showed you here cotton needs four cotton will grow in this second row so I'm gonna make this entire second row cotton wheat will grow in the third row so I can make this entire third row wheat. Um, this is kind of my idea, but I'm going to create a little path so that um, a road comes up here at least a little bit. So actually, where I currently have stuff, I'm going to leave. A, I'm going to leave a road that comes almost to right here. This middle section that can't do trees, I'm going to do that cotton as well because cotton can't do that. So I'll go ahead and start adding in my plants just so I can see how my plant lineup's gonna be. This will also make sure that I have a way to make money if I need to start selling stuff. I can sell stuff. I left this one road here because I might try to have that be my connector road in the middle of the map and that'll save me a little bit of money. But I broke away most of the rest of my, my stuff. So we're going to do cotton here, we're going to do cotton here, 
let's see, that's one, two, three, four. Cotton here. And we'll do cotton here. Okay. And we will, we're going to do this entire row on the outside we're going to take advantage of. So that's all cotton. And like I said, it's very important that you have your your row your your setup here so that you can um, come here, pick your plants, go relatively fast. Oh, is there something I want to test. Will wheat grow here? I don't think wheat will grow here. I think it's too far away from the water. Okay, so wheat will not grow here. But I want my road to be here. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to position a couple lakes inside this area here. Uh, for now, so that my builders can build the lake, fill the lakes, I'm going to build just a wind pump here and a wind pump here probably destroy those a little bit later um, so my plan is going to be to have two rows of crops with a road that goes from here to here and then it connects down uh, the reason why I don't want to use this third one to grow my wheat at least not up here is I want my workers to have a road that allows them to be on a road moving fast and then be able to get these crops without having to, you know, walk through three spaces of open field because open field slows them down a lot. You'll see this little guy here. Oh, well, he's crafting. Okay, the builder. When it's on the road, they run way faster. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to design it that way. So I'm going to remove this one, remove this one. We're going to do, so, shop. I'm going to try to build paved road. Why can't I build the paved road? Right there. Must be placed near a road. Okay, so I have to, I have to start the very first section with the dirt road. Not a big deal. And then I can start doing paved roads. I'll have to actually wait for that to build in. So this will take a little while. Like I said, I might pause the video and then show you how I finish up because I don't think anyone's going to want to stick around for the whole video. But I wanted to give you the idea that yeah, I'm going to be spacing out my stuff so that it, it builds out and you get uh, free water up here for all my plants. And then I'm going to try to build kind of a circle a circular road here that goes around on the outside I'm gonna put my wool people against these walls I'm gonna get rid of all this wheat right here this is gonna be where I farm my my wool and then I'm gonna try to build in here all my fabric stuff with my silos because I want my silos to be able to kind of be close enough to the fabric people close enough to everyone that that they're all able to interconnect and work but I do realize that if I try to show you guys the entire building process of this it's probably going to take an hour or two of a video and I don't want to make one that is that long so we're going to pause it one more time we'll see how good my editing skills are together but this shows you that my town is completely broken down I've given you an idea of the of how you need to space out your plants to take advantage of the free water and then I'll show you when I come back the, how I'm going to put the lakes in to go ahead and do the get the wheat working in the back similar to this one here right this one this lake here is providing this this one and this one and this one which are three spaces away which fourth space away which shouldn't work see it doesn't work here but with that lake here our little pond it's able to make these two grow so that's kind of kind of the route I'm going for. And then I hope to be able to use those lakes for building in my power plants uh, so that they are in the right spaces to build my other things. It's going to be kind of complicated to get it all perfect. I'm hoping to have a really good map to show you 
at the end of all of this. So I'm going to pause it right here and I'll pick it back up after I finish building and you're going to see a much different town than that mess I had at the beginning. Okay, look guys, it's Steve again and check it out. So this is the new village I made. As you can see, I have uh, a lot of these uh, fabric plates and so these two are making this one. This one over here makes the one for the sheep and this one is making the uniforms. So uniforms, they the one thing I notice now, now that I've done this, these sell for much less than um, the bakery. So the, the bakery setup could be worth it because when you sell 10 cakes, it's a million, uh, $1,700,000 in the game. The fabric, if I sell if I sell ten of these, I'm gonna get like four hundred thousand, I think, close to that. But this is an interesting setup. I'm gonna let it run. I'm gonna see where I can get from this two eighty four. I'm still in seventeenth place. I'm gonna fall down a little bit because I'm gonna be going to sleep soon. But this is a much cleaner city as you can see. I have a loop with a road down the middle. Down in here, these rows right here, I put a couple fountains, and then these are all workers' houses. These right here are smaller workers' houses. Some of these will be removed as I get more bigger workers' houses up. So as you can see, the little trick I do, I build in a, a dirt road, I remove the dirt road, and now that let me build this one. Now I can go right here, I can go to the shop, and I want to get one more of these ATV riders. That way I can remove this one right here. And I'm gonna I'm looking at basically upgrading all of these smaller houses, these farmhouses, all to tractors. But I'm slowing down my spending just because I'm at seven hundred thousand. I uh, I have to make sure that I'm at an equilibrium where I make enough to keep my town running with this is how much it costs for me to run uh, you know, eight minutes or so. So this, uh, you know, I can last a long time with this much money, but if I get too low, I I, I don't want to go too fast. I kind of want to see how fast I get to 10 uniforms. I just kind of got to the point where I'm really getting my sheep going and farming. I was making a little mistake earlier. I needed some storehouses. Storehouses store the wool and only the wool. The warehouses, which I should probably build one more warehouse. The warehouses hold the uniforms. Actually, I'm pretty good on warehouses. Eh, I'll build one more just for sanity. So you can see me go into here. Warehouses are pretty cheap. I usually like to put the warehouses on the road if I can because people have to run to them, drop stuff off, move stuff, drop stuff off. Uh, I built this right next to this power plant so it's getting free energy. This power plant actually gives free energy just like water a couple spaces away so these get their free energy and this one over here gets a free energy as well. Kind of spin it around. These lumberjack houses will probably go away eventually. Uh, I needed wood to help me build and now really realistically I have too many lumberjacks so actually I'm just going to remove one of these. Eventually I'm going to put another fabric house here but I have to get the wool farm really really churning because right now I don't have enough excess wool when this is see she's gonna grab all three of those wool shortly and so there's no real reason to um, you know there's just no real reason to set it up so that I uh, I have a second one yet trying to make wool yarn. I could set up one more making, yeah, I'll probably set up one more making cotton. As you can see, I'm getting up to 100 cotton. And when I get up to 100, the kind of cool thing with this setup, because I'm making so much cotton with that big farm, is I can actually sell 100 cotton for 30K. And that, that just empties out my silos. And then it keeps my farmers working it keeps my 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 giant cotton farm I have here because these these go really fast going. Um, I'm working on getting a little more wood because I might be able to do that with wood too. Uh, but for now, I have three lumber mills going, and so as the lumber builds up, I go ahead and sell this because it, even though it's only 10k at a time, it's okay money. These kind of things will keep me going, and then eventually. I'll start hopefully turning out uniforms pretty quick. I just need a few more ATVs so that my uh, f my little my sheep setup over here 
I need to start building up food in these so that the sheep can come right out. And I, I think right now I just need a few more workers. Um, I like that I just have this set up on this one side. I don't have any other animals. Everything else is just uh, farm on this outer row. So farm, 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 farm. A little bit of storage right here. I could remove these and uh, do a little bit more farming. Like I can do one more. Right, right in this spot, I'll throw one more wheat just because there's no reason not to have it there. Um, earlier, I don't know if I need this long term, but I, I put a pond here and I put three extra trees right here because I wanted to be able to have a bit more trees over here because when I was building this all out, it was taking forever to farm the trees. But this takes a look at a setup that I think if you can make your city look similar to this, um, you'd have a pretty good city, a pretty good format. It's just turning through everything. Everybody's working. This is a trick that I'm glad I figured out. You build in the little road and then you just remove the dirt road. This is when you get, this is easier to do when you're wealthier. This kind of stuff is going to be harder to set up later on. But the reason that you can do this and it works out really well for you is because the, um, these these are all worker houses right and then these ones back here the these ones i'm i set these guys up so they just build right here and then they come to here they build right there and then they come to here was the idea i have to sell some lumber so let me do that to keep them in that routine but so they don't have to go very far and then even though i have these these right here for my two guys they when they're running back and forth to get items out of these watch he's gonna drop it off right there and this guy will come running over here to get it once he needs it they'll use this back road so they walk up run across the back road like he's doing now see he's gonna walk up take off across the back road and that's the nice thing I think about having this outside loop and then you know I just have this one road here because if somebody's over here and, and they're going to somewhere over there you want them to cut up you could make this somewhere else uh, kind of space it out I like four spaces in between at least four because that lets you do the two inner rows of workers here eventually because workers don't go in and out of their house very often if you're if your city set up well and then on the outside you can do the buildings like storehouses or even the fabric houses because those th those people they run in and out in and out in and out that's why even though this fabric house was put back here to get the three energy and i'll probably put one right here eventually if i'm going to do another three energy to make uniforms but that's only when I start to see that I'm getting a buildup of the secondary yarn, which currently I'm not ch I'm not turning out enough wool. I might tweak this a little bit, maybe put one more sheep house over here, but that's only if I start to see me be able to get enough workers filling up the feed bins to where these guys can all eat to their heart's content. I am farming enough wheat. See, I have 30 here. My workers are just not delivering it fast enough yet um, and getting it into their pins. And it's very, you know, it, it's a balancing act. I'll play with it a little bit. We'll see where it goes. But hopefully... All right, guys. This is just a quick finish up to my video. Here is my full functioning town that makes uniforms. Uh, what I found out is that while this is a much more efficient town than the bakery town that I showed you before that I deleted, uh, it might have been okay just to redesign a town like this. I, I would have actually moved this this road to here and, and maybe had a little bit less to, to have a little more room over here for the farming, just on this side. Uh, you leave it where it is over here, two spaces, it, it works fine over here. Be, because the uh, the thing about this, I, I I I could balance this out a little bit. The cotton grows so fast up here that it fills up to 100 cotton. That's why I built this to get rid of it. The uniforms do sell okay at, at 300,000, but that's a top product that I can sell. 
Um, and you can't produce them that fast with this setup. I think I should be getting rid of some of some of this up here and maybe building some more farms in because I just am not producing enough wool. I'm just not going to put in the time to uh, to make this perfect because at this point there's only a day left. I'm ranked 19th and there's just no way to get up here to these top people. So I'll run the town how it is. I'll maybe tweak it a tiny bit tomorrow, but I've been spending a lot of time for this video. I just wanted to add this in at the end so you can see that uh, basically what this setup is letting me do is I save up till I have 100 lumber. I am making jet fuel. I am making uniforms. I am selling stacks of 100 cotton. I am selling cotton yarn in piles because I make a whole lot more cotton yarn than I can turn into uniforms and it's basically because I just cannot make enough wool. I'm a, I Maybe I'll try to balance that out now that I have all the fabric designers and I do have a little bit of money because I'm starting to build up extra money. And so if I do that then I can go ahead and uh, see if it makes it a little bit better but I'm gonna end the video here uh, this I hope this gives you an idea of maybe uh, something you can do in the game when you build up that first town and you start to have more money than you realize what to do with if you spend an hour you can delete your town maybe maybe an hour and a half you can rebuild it you can you can put out your road so that everything moves really efficiently there's not a lot of wasted time you just gotta figure out I mean basically what I've seen here uh, if you go in the plains, you either have to bake, uh, and you can. You, I, what I haven't tried is making bread instead of cake, but you either make bread or cake, and you need a lot of salt because that salt gets made slow. But even though the salt gets made slow, I, I don't know about the bread, but the cake sells for so much more money. Uh, a stack of ten cakes, it takes longer to make them, but they sell for 1.7 million. So theoretically, I have to sell what? Six, 60 uniforms to equal those 10 cakes and the uniforms don't end up being made that much faster because now the problem is is that I have to feed all of these farms here to make enough wool to make a wool yarn and that becomes the bottleneck so there always is going to be a bottleneck I think the next season even though I didn't like the forest last time because the thing I didn't like about the forest is I like just being able to put trees by the water that regrow grow extremely fast so you don't even need that many trees and you look at this I have 50 trees 70 lumber I mean these guys are just turning through these fa these these trees that are growing fast but um they're in the forest there is just m stuff all over the place that you have to remove and so you're just getting to the situation where you can't build a good town you, you get so limited you need money so quick to be able to get anything going and I just couldn't figure out a way to do it but I've learned a lot I've learned that if I put my uh, refineries next to my power plants they don't need energy and if I put them next to the power plant that's also next to a water pump they get one of their water barrels already I've learned a lot of different things this is a pretty long video so I should just end it here I'm gonna stitch it all together get it online and hopefully a couple people like this and appreciate that I kinda showed you some of the tips and tricks to star town I don't know if you'll get into it or Townstar, <laughs> but uh, there'll be a link in the description below. If you sign up and give it a try, you do have to play it. And then about a week later, you'll get your 100 gala tokens. If those will be worth more than 10 cents in the future, I don't know. Uh, I, it depends, I think, on what other games they release and what other partnerships they build. I think the Splinterlands partnership was good, but Gala Games is supposed to be an uh, entire game platform. And I don't know how many of those, you know, Facebooky Farmville people are also crypto people, so I don't know how popular this game will be. I do know now, for me, after building it all out and getting it done, it's it's a little tedious to sit here and sell stuff, right? Because I mean, that's the thing. One thing about the Cake Town, which is probably why, even if this is better uh, per capita, which it could be, because I mean, I'm selling these for twenty thousand. I sell the cotton when it builds up for thirty k. I sell uh, the gas for ten thousand, and I'm constantly selling that stuff. I mean, it's just going, 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 going. Uh, the jet fuel right here and I, and I dump all this wood for 200,000 uh, for a hundred and something thousand when it gets up to a hundred I get 30k when I get the cotton stacked up to a hundred so it, it, it's constant selling the thing is 
a game like this, I think maybe going something that's a little less passive, just waiting until your your town finally builds up 10 cakes might be a little better. My, my daughter is starting to fight, so I'm out of here. Bye. <laughs>